Today we will talk about arrays, about how to process elements, sequences, and the most important thing is not the arrays themselves, but the, the problems we can solve using arrays. We had a little touch with some algorithms over sequences, but today we'll make more complex, uh, we'll attack more complex tasks. And the most important thing here is that you solve all, all these tasks. You'll have a look at the end of this topic, but first let's come through the our teaching material. So we'll take a look first how to declare, how to create and allocate arrays, how to fill their data, how to access their elements by index, by the indexing operator, how to read from the console and output to the console arrays, how to iterate over them with for and for each loops, and finally how to uh, use list of t, of t, use list of some type, and also how to copy arrays. All these topics are basic and they are not very complex, I believe most of you have some familiarity with arrays, but the interesting things will be how to use them to solve different problems. And at the second exam, you definitely have some uh, problems which will be attacked through arrays or lists or some other uh, things from this topic. Okay, so let's start with creating arrays. Creating arrays uh, is something that we do every day, arrays or lists, we, we, we mean some of them. And array is a sequence of elements. It's a numbered sequence of elements, like this shown here. The first element is this, its number is zero, uh, the second is this, etc, etc, and usually these elements have the same time, the same type. So elements have uh, are fixed of an, are fixed so the array has a fixed number of elements. It's for example, if you have elements of uh, array of five five elements, it always have exactly five elements it, and it cannot be resized. So if you need to resize the array, you can create a new array, copy the old elements to the, to the new array, and finally add the, the new elements. So arrays are used to process a sequences of elements, usually from the same time type. For example, if we have a sequence of 20 numbers, uh, we just use array of int or array of long or some other type. And at the picture we, we see array of five elements. The elements are these cells. They are usually uh, shown as cells and they have indices and the first index is zero and the last is n minus 1, where n is the length of the array. Arrays also have a property dot length. They are something different than the arrays in other languages because they know their length. For example, if you program in C or C++, the arrays don't, don't know their length. And it's easy to get outside of the bounds of the array. It's a usual mistake or book which you can easily produce in your programs to try to access non-existing element. For example, if you have five elements uh, in array and try to access the element at position 20, it's invalid operation in C While in other languages like C or C++, this is valid operation. Uh, the, the language allows it and the result is unpredictable. This means that uh, you can 
doctors see the syndrome, oh, this worked well yesterday, <laughs> and now it doesn't work. So you start your program several times, and it produces different results, like uh, something like random uh, behavior. So arrays in C sharp are good. If you misuse them, they will uh, catch an exception, and you are not allowed to do so. We'll start from declaring arrays. Declaring arrays is the act of making a variable which holds an array, which holds a sequence, a numbered sequence of elements of some type. Uh, you use the square brackets operator to declare arrays, and we have a few examples here. For example, if we want to declare a uh, arrays of integers, we use int, uh, bracket, bracket, and we give a name to this variable. So my int array it's, uh, is an array of integers. Note that this declaration does not allocate any elements, and when the, after declaring an element, it has an array, it has a value of no. It has no value. It is, there is a difference between empty array, which is array that exists and that has zero element, elements, and the empty array, which has value of no. In fact, if somebody of you have experience with C or C++, int bracket bracket means int asterisk in, in C++ or C. Arrays are always dynamic, dynamically located in C sharp, and they always live in the so-called uh, dynamic memory, in the managed heap. We'll talk more about it a few lessons later, but generally there are two areas of the computer memory uh, which is used by C Sharp to hold their, the, the program's data. The first area is the stack, the program stack, and the second is the so-called uh, heap. The managed heap is the dynamically allocated area of the memory, and when you create a new array, it store it's stored in the heap. When you create a new int, it's not stored in the heap, it's in the stack. Okay, for now we don't need to get into such details, but declaring arrays is just like declare, declaring a single element, but you, we, we add this bracket. So if we want to just declare a string array, we just declare string, bracket, bracket, open and close, and we read string array and the name. We can also continue with assignment of something or just stop here. But at this moment, this value is no. No means no value. It's a special pointer to the uh, first address in the memory, which is zero. It, and which is generally invalid. So once we have declared an array, we can create it or allocate it. The word allocate is working better for me. But creating an array means to allocate few elements in the dynamic memory, in the so-called managed heap. And when, you, uh, when we execute some array equals to new, the type of the array and some number of elements, we allocate this number of elements. Note that this number can come from the user. For example, we can first ask the user how many elements you want to create, and he enters five, and we can allocate n elements where n comes from the user. Uh, this is a small difference. Uh, there is a small difference than C and C++ where arrays can be statically allocated with a uh, constant size. 
here the arrays can be located for, with any size as long as we have enough memory. For example, if we try to uh, allocate 2 billion elements of in, most probably we will not have enough memory and this will cause uh, something like out of memory exception or so. So when we allocate an, an array it the, in the dynamic memory there is uh, a space which is allocated for this area uh, for this array. The elements are um, are arranged one after another physically in the memory and also in the memory the length of the array is also kept this means that this number 5 which is new int of 5 elements is kept as part of this array it's in some, in some hidden field for example there is a special byte or no, or few bytes. In fact, there are four bytes, which hold the, the size of this array. So, once an array is created, we want to use it. But first, le let's see how we can initialize an array with some fixed values. For example, we want to create an array which holds exactly these numbers: one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we can just say my array equals 2 and we put the elements in uh, in these curly brackets with commas and this fills the arrays uh, the picture is not good enough the elements should be stored here okay so the new operator is not needed here and this is just a syntactic sure in C-sharp. This is something like uh, create the array, assign one in its first cell later, assign two in its second cell, etc. But this is a shortcut uh, because this is uh, an operation which we need too often. Okay, this is another example how we can create an array of strings. First we declare an array of strings, give it a name, days of weeks, and initialize it with the equals operator, open the curly brackets, and uh, put the values separated by commas. Here we can also put a comma, and it will not give an, a compilation error. Do you know why this is done? Because of copy-pasting. If you want to create an array of 1000 echo elements, you can just create a uh, few elements and copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. You have a comma after the last element and it will still compile. Okay, it's time to perform our first demo. Our first demo is about creating an array and I'll write some code just to open the Visual Studio solution it's always slow on my computer because I have installed everything which comes from Telerik <laughs> and it makes me my, my studio a little bit slow and the computer is not fast it's five years old maybe okay the first demo is days of week. Wow, open it, please. We can create this array. This is the definition days of week equals to new string of elements. And we can see the length and print it of this array. Okay, when we start it, we get a result of 7. What else we can do? We can skip this. In fact, this is not required. It's the same syntax. It's still compiled. And also we can put 
here a comma and it still compiles and runs correct I'm not sure if we can do this obviously no uh, and also we can do something different instead of declaring an array we can use var var means that this variable will hold will extract its type of the right side of the assignment the right side of this assignment is an expression which returns an array of strings so var means create an array of strings with these names we can run through the debugger with f9 and see how arrays look like they are sequences of cells 0 1 2 3 4 etc we cannot change the start index it's always zero it's unchangeable some other languages like pascal are all changing it but c sharp is not okay what else what else we can show an array of strings int array uh, no array of ints int array ints equals to one two three four five in this compiles we can print ints dot land wow why we don't have uh, I have a mistake now we have five length of five and we can also print ints of zero this means the first element of this array and it will print one okay one and if we try to print ints of 120 we'll get an exception very nice exception which says index out of range exception you are trying to access an array index which is out of range uh, and also if you have an empty array array which is not allocated and if we pr try to print it, it this will not work because the compiler will know that this is an assigned local variable if we go through this for example if we uh, make this static outside of the program which means a global variable will uh, have a lesson about it it will be zero because uh, no this will not be zero this will cause a no reference exception because uh, this is a variable which has no value and we are trying to access the length of non-existing variable it's a mistake and it says no reference exception I think we have other situations that we already obtained this exception for example trying to parse no with int.parse or some other situations okay let's go ahead and talk a little bit about accessing array elements how to read how to modify it how to index these elements so generally we use the so-called indexer which is the square brackets operator it's called indexer and it's already defined for arrays arrays are accessed by index not by name and their indices start from zero and have uh, the largest value of length minus one which means that if we have 100 elements the last will have index 99 so let's see the example if we have ints we can take the length and we can reverse the elements the following way we can first allocate a new array reversed with the same length like the length of the initial array this length and later we can reverse the array the following way we make a loop from zero up to the length minus one because here we have less than not less than echo and 
we make some simple calculation. If we have position 0, position n minus 1, position 1, position n minus 2, etc., we need to uh, okay. We need to move this here, this here, the first here, etc. Right? This is reversing an array. There is a built-in function to reverse arrays, but we are just demonstrating it. So how it works? It's calculate the new position of each element, which is the current position minus one. Uh, which is the length minus current position minus 1. For example, if we have 10 elements and the index is 0, we'll have 9. And the 0 element will take the 9th position in the new, etc. So, this is something easy, not complex, and it demonstrates a few things. The first is how to create, how to locate array, and the second is how to access array by index, and it shows that it's possible to read and write uh, array element. Not only read, but you can also write, you can modify it and change the position. So we have this example here, uh, and I will run it through the deb debugger of the Visual Studio. We press F 10, F10, F10, and now we have array, which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have reversed array, which initially initially holds zeros, because when you allocate an array, it always has zeros as values. This means that it cannot have uh, unexpected values inside, like in C++ or C. In C, when you allocate array, it has uh, random values. The same values which happen to be in the memory at this time, which uh, memory is used for this array. So we can pass through these elements and see what happens. Reversed of length minus index minus one. How to see this? We can say quick watch, and this is four. Or we can click on app watch and this is in the watch in the watch window uh, and it's easy to, to track what happens we can track index and I'm not sure I can reverse that index is 0 and the new index is 4 the fourth element of the result will take the first the zero element of the source. Now we have one and three. We have two and two. We have three and one. And finally we have at the last position of the destination array two. The last element of the source array will be put in the first element of the destination array. And finally, we have completed this operation and we just print the array. How we print the array? We just go from index 0 to length minus 1 and print this index using the indexator operator, which is the brackets. Okay, that's all. And the result is the reverse array. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's next? The next is something which we'll use on most problems we solve, and this is reading and writing arrays from and to the console. How to read elements, how to write elements, etc. So generally, there is no easy way to read an array. We can read the, but we can easily read the elements of the array. There is no function like read array, which reads a sequence of elements. We can, but we can create a loop and read them one by one. First, we read the number of elements of this array by parsing the read line. And after that, we allocate th this number of elements with new 
and finally we perform a loop from 0 to n minus 1 and the next element is read from the console and is parsed and the, the string read from the console is parsed so this is the usual way to read arrays if you have some problems to solve and if the problem statement says read an array from the console it's recommended to read it this way this means the array will be given as a sequence of numbers the first number will be the count of these numbers and the number n and the next n, n lines will contain the values of the array so this is the first variant and the second variant is to use some external class which is capable to read more than one number on the line because it's not so easy and so straight forward for example if the problem statement says we have some numbers uh, array which has some numbers separated by space for example this and finishing with a new line there is no easy way to read this the first way is to read this as a string to split the string on tokens by the space used as a separator and parse each of these tokens this is your first way and the second way is to use some external class like this one uh, console in wow what happens with the internet no this doesn't work sin console class this class can read tokens and it considers everything which is not uh, which is a separator as a separator this means space uh, empty one end of one etc and it's similar to the same in C++ but it's not exactly the same because it's not possible to overwrite the this operator in C sharp in the way we can do in C++ okay but in our problems we'll hope we'll have only this scenario one number on the first line and n numbers on the next n lines if we need to read two arrays once we have completed reading the first we'll, we can read another array and the next example is how to see or how to check if an array is symmetrical how to check if an array is symmetrical we can go through the array and check whether this element is equal to this later we can check if this is equal to this and this is until we find the middle of this array because if we go to this we need to check if it's equal with the previous which we have already done it's not needed and if we have odd numbers of elements we don't need to check the central element because it's always symmetrical to itself so if we, if we have five elements we need to check if the first and the last are the same and the second and the uh, element before the last are also the same and that's all so we perform a loop from zero to the length plus one uh, divided by two which means if we have five five plus one is six divided by two means uh, three and it is less than which is mean zero one and two hmm we have one check more than required 
0, 1, and 2. I think this could be optimized, maybe without this, but we need to check. Mm. Okay, this is not so important, uh, whether we make one additional not needed step or not, it's correct in both way, in both scenarios. So, we check whether the ith element, for example, the element of position 0, is different than the n minus i minus 1, which is if n is 5, like in this scenario. This is mean, means 4. And this is the element of fourth position. When you work with arrays, it's always a good idea to have a sheet of paper to draw the array and to make some calculations about the positions. It's very easy to to forget about this 0, minus 1, or to make plus instead of minus, or uh, to make less than or ratio instead of less than, etc. With arrays, it's very easy to have uh, the so-called off by one error. Off by one error means something which is almost correct, but correct up to one position which is not processed correctly. W either it could be one position outside of the array or one position less than required. For example, to, to forget to exchange the last position with its corresponding position. So you should be careful about handling positions correctly and the best way to perform this is just to have a good test. You need to check your solution. You will learn your lesson because when you solve enough computer programming problems, you will find that if you want to have the maximum number of results, points at the exam, you really need to check for these special situations. And also we are planning to remove the full feedback during the next programming exam because the full fe feedback stimulates you to try a solution which is not perfect just to check if it will take the maximum points. I if I'm a contestant, I will write something. I will not check it if it is correct. I will just submit it because the system will check it instead of me. <laughs> and if it's not correct, I will put more time and effort to, s to see where is my bug, which is not a good idea generally when you uh, de are developing a software. When you are developing a software, you need first to think about the special cases for your code, how to break it, whether it will work correctly in all situations, and finally submit it after it's well checked. Mm -hmm. But there is enough time for the next example. Uh, do you know the dates? I believe they are posted in the group. They are in February. I mean, I think they are. 7th February or something. Let me check. Uh, but we have a schedule. The C Sharp Fundamentals groups. Ah, this is the schedule. The schedule says that the exams will be 6th, 7th, and Eight. This means that we'll have three different topics which will have similar problem. These are the dates. You should come on some of these dates, only one. We'll have again a form to fill your preferences. And on the 5th of February, we'll have a live exam 
like in the previous way and we'll have also some samples before that so we, you can train but it will be the same as, uh, as a mechanism of participating you'll have the system, you can submit solutions, you have the problem statements if you have some error for example, small error for example using a comma instead of dot you have zero points and you know all about this already uh, I hope these days will work at least one of them for all of you because it's not easy to give additional data this means that we need to invent five additional problems which will take two days or at least one day of some of us and the C sharp part 3 will start on 13th of February this is the plan I believe will be able to be strict okay so what we have we have a demonstration about checking a symmetry and this enters this combines entering an array and checking king for symmetry at the beginning we consider the array is symmetric we check the corresponding elements whether they are symmetric or not and so once we find something which is not symmetric we perform break which is a small optimization we don't need to check the entire array uh, if we find a break at some moment uh, um, non-symmetric cells at some moment so if we have three elements one five and one it should be symmetric of course if we have four elements two three three two <laughs> see what happens because I try to parse the entire string as a single number this will not do the job four elements three two two three it's symmetric four elements minus one three two three not symmetric two elements one two not symmetric one element it should be always symmetric zero elements are always symmetric <laughs> uh, when you solve such problems you, you should always ask some questions like first is it a wall to have an empty array first and if it, if it is a Lego input how to handle it what is the correct expected output mm -hmm. it's hard to say whether the empty array is symmetric or not but if it's not symmetric where is the asymmetric part of it I believe it's symmetric it's not easy to say but it should be symmetric and if we have z minus one element we see overflow exception <laughs> how this happened I don't know it's nice to check it minus one ah, I'm trying to locate minus one element in the dynamic memory which is not Lego operation it's illegible okay and I want you to show the class we talked about we can copy it no no this this class which allows you to enter arrays uh, in a simplified way you can put it in the same file or in different file and this is the class knuckle.io.sim uh, and it has next in next in means read the next integer from the console which can be separated to, from the previous by single space by few spaces by empty one or etc 
and instead of this console read one we can parse the next uh, we can read the next number there is no parsing nothing and now we can enter five elements put some intervals four 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 three wow this failed why let me check we have next int next int it should work five one two three one two three four five ah i entered five okay if we have four the first is two the second is three the next is five and the last is four if we use this class we can put the elements in a sequence on a single row line on several lines or we can use several spaces or even tap and it works but generally you will not need to use to use it okay what's next how to print the elements of the array we already have done this and we just pass through these elements and print them because we have ability to get the array elements by index we just perform a for loop from 0 to the length minus 1 and perform printing. There is nothing interesting here. We have array of strings which is allocated in line during the initialization, during, during the declaration and we just pass through them and print them and we have this as a live demo which is nothing interesting. Wow, what happens? This says this code is invalid. Okay, I will erase it. This is a bug syntax syntax error in another class, but this prevents me from starting this class because we have several programs in the same solution. And the result is element zero is one, element one is the string two, etc. And we have another possibility to access the array elements, and this is using for each. So let's first start with for. For loop is used when we want to keep track of the index we are currently processing. For example, if we have an array of 10 numbers, and we need to do something with each of these numbers, and we want to know which number is current. For example, if we have to build an array, an array called squares, which holds for each element of some array, it's square. It's the element multiplied by, by itself. So we need this index, and this is the best, maybe the best way to implement this. We pass through this array from zero to length minus one and we at each position in the result we uh, calculate its value by the source array multiplying the next element by itself and some other examples are that we can print the the array uh, from the end to the start now we make a for loop which starts from the length of the array minus one which is the last element and walks in the back direction to zero in closing in closing and this will just reverse the array or more correctly said it will print the reverse elements of the array it will the array will stay the same it will not be reversed but its elements will be reversed 
and we can also initialize the array values with the index for example at position 0 we'll have a value of 0 at position 1 we'll have a value of 1 etc this is a simple initialization you can use this to check your algorithms for example if you have some algorithm over sequences and the input is set to be no more than 10,000 of elements how you can create 10,000 of elements this will work well okay 10,000 array elements and fill them with these numbers or you can use random numbers do you know how to use random it's good idea to know about it random is used by for example we want to print 10 random numbers first we create a random generator we'll have this in the lecture creating and using objects and we create a loop from 0 to 9 and we just print rand dot next of and we can specify a range for example from 20 to 30 this will produce numbers from 20 to 29 this is a I think it's a bad design but in fact you can never get 30 you can get number from 20 to 29 this it's declared in the specification but nobody can know and also if you do this you'll get the same numbers see wow what happens that's because the random generator is initialized by the by the current by the current time and this program is very fast it executes itself for one tick of the timer the timer does not change during the execution of this program and it all it starts from the same starting number <laughs> that's why you should put the random initialization outside of the loop but we'll have a lecture about it let's get back here what also we can do we can process an array which with for each for each is an operator which iterates over a collection collection means everything which is a sequence or group of elements you can iterate over the characters of a string because strings are sequences of characters you can iterate over the elements of array you can iterate over the elements of list or stack or queue or hash table or other data structure we'll have a deep understanding about the data structures in computer programming but this will be in the last part of our course so how for each works you say I want the variable value which is of type type to take each of the values from these arrays for example is this arrays of towns Sofia, Varna and Plovdiv here you have a string because the array is of string and also the value will be the will take the first time the first town the second town and the last town uh, you can use var instead of type it, this is the most common scenario because the array is well known which is its type its type and the compiler can extract the type automatically it's better to see an example and it's very easy we have an array of towns which are some capitals of some countries we process them with for each and in the capital variable we get all the capitals one by one for each 
type variable in array and we write it. But seems a little bit easier than using the indexator, uh, making for loop from zero to the length minus one, but it has some restrictions. It has some restrictions and the first restriction is that for each cannot uh, modify uh, the variable inside the loop. This means that we cannot modify an array inside for each. I'll show you. We have a nice example here. We create a 10 elements of m array of 10 elements. We initialize them with the numbers from 0 to 9. We print them with, with for each. And later we assign minus 1 at the odd positions with a loop which starts from 1 and runs by two positions. 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. And finally, it prints the array with for each. How it works? The initial array is this, the modified array is this, and that's all. And if we try to modify the number, it will be not be allowed. Number equals 2. It's illegal. We cannot do this. In for each, we, can, we can't do this. But in for, we can. We can modify the element of position index inside the for. This is the first difference. And the second difference is that we don't have, in fact, the index number. Because not all collections can be indexed. There are collections which can be traversed with, with for each, but they have no index. You not always have direct access. For example, if we have a linked list, which is... Wow. Which is some kind of structure, data structure, where we have cells, and each cell knows its next cell. There is no indexing here. And we, you can have also more complex structures. For example, some cells may have several descendants. And you can also have loops, which is the graph data structure. And generally, for each can work for such structures, and there is no indexing. Nobody can say which is the first element, and which is the second, which is the third. But for each still works. This is the second difference, but it's too early now to uh, understand in, it in details. And also, there may be a difference in the performance. Some people always ask, which is faster? Just try. It will be nearly the same speed. But in some situations, four could be faster. In some situations, for each could be faster. Generally, for each is slower because it needs to create the so-called iterator, which is a new class which needs to be instantiated, etc. But it's not always the case. OK? That's for e, about for each, and the maybe one of the last topics is using resizable arrays. There is no way to resize an array. For example, if we have an array of 10 elements, how we can add a new element at the end? There is no such operation. No such operation. No way. So... That's why we have a resizable arrays. Resizable arrays are, in fact, not arrays. They are lists. A list is a data structure which is similar to array, but you can add elements at any position or insert. For example, you can insert something 
in the middle of the list, you can insert something at the end of the list or up something. You can also delete, for example, you can delete the first element and the rest elements will move. This means that if we have this list, and here this is the first, second, third, etc. position, we can delete this element and these elements will shift on the left because we'll have an uh, empty space here. And we can also insert a new element after the first here. And these elements will move on the right to make a space for it. And this works. How fast is this? We'll discuss later. When we compare the data structures, their efficiency, when we talk about the complexity of the algorithms in the last part of our course. But for now, if you don't know how elements you need, you can use list of text. For example, if you have uh, to produce some result of some algorithm and you don't know how much element it will need to hold. If the problem is find all prime numbers between 1000 and 2000, you don't know how many are they. You don't know. You just have an algorithm to find them, but you don't know how much are they. So you can create a list and use add, add, add. Once we find the prime number, we add it in the end of the list. So the list is data type which is parameterized. This means that it can hold any data type. This is, is read list of key. List of some data type key. We can use, for example, list of int, list of object, or list of string, which is the same like in the arrays. We use array of ints, array of strings, etc. And this comes from system collections.generic namespace, which needs to be imported in your project. I'll show you examples. So the methods that you will use now are add and remove and also count. Maybe add and count are the everyday used methods, but sometimes you can find for some others. When you click control space, you can find other uh, methods of list. So if we have a list, we can add five numbers this way. Just int list dot add and pass some number. How we allocate it? List of int variable equals new list of int and these brackets. These brackets call the anonymous constructor of this class because list of int is class. We'll learn about classes, about data structures, about lists, text, etc. about generics later but you can still use this because if you don't use list your life will be much more complex there is a way to avoid using lists for example you can always allocate one million elements and suppose they are enough mm -hmm. this will work but it's not a good idea uh, for example, if you want to find the prime numbers between, between 1,000 and 2,000 and 2,000, there will be no more than 1,000 and you can OK 1,000 elements and use a counter, how much exactly are they, and solve the problem. But it's not a good idea. So if we have array, it's nearly the same. As you see, list of int works very similarly to array. But if we want to add a new element, if we want to, if we have 
if we have five elements, five ints, and we want to add a new int, there is no such operation for the arrays. You need to allocate a new array first, second to copy the elements one by one from the old array to the new array. And finally, you need, you can add the new element. If you do this one million times, your computer will hang. It will be too slow. But using list, it's just one line, add, which means add this element at the end. It this works efficiently. This means that for adding one million elements, it will take very little time, maybe few milliseconds. I can show you, and we have some demonstration prepared for this. Lists. First, we have list of strings, and we initialize it, and we add the elements of this array inside this list. And later we processes, process this with for each. And finally we process this with the indexer. You can see that list has indexer. It behaves just like arrays. It has count, not length, but count, which is the same. It has indexer, which means you can have direct access to some element. And you can use it with for each, you can use it with for, just like the arrays. And you can use add. You just add some elements to the list and print them. We can see what happens. Initially, the array of string is null. List which is not created, just like the arrays, is null. It's not empty, it's null. It's non-existing. This is different. Later we create and initialize array of strings. And with for each, we add these strings one by one to the list. Now list has count one and has these elements. The zero position holds special. And etc. etc. Now we have count three. Uh, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Later we print some uh, hyphens and we print these strings. Okay, what else we I can show you? You can initialize the list of strings directly, this way. Just like the arrays, see? new list of string, which is almost the same like new string array. The same thing. Instead of new string array, you print new list of strings and the bracket, and you need to import this using system collection generic. Okay, let's create a new, a new program from the, from the zero from scratch, we create new program, uh, which is called lists, lists, example, okay, great, and now we can use list of string, strings, echoes to This is not a load, but we can use control space, uh, new, and it's automatically passed, and we need to put this. And now it's a load, and we can use for each var item in strings, print the item. It works. 
there are many interesting things like strings uh, first to create more element strings dot reverse we can reverse them wow we can print the first strings dot dot first which takes the first element after the reverse okay we'll remove this we can print max max what is this this is the max in the lexicographical order when we sort them the bottom one we can use min and it works we can use average it will fail <laughs> because these are not numbers if these were numbers we'll, we would have also average but it's not calculatable over strings what else we have we have something like strings dot you can check there are many things that you get from this list for example you can find last element okay what also ah you can insert this is nice for each all right strings print the item you can insert you can say uh, strings dot insert at position zero new element it will be put before the first element it's at the start you can insert after third position it will be put on the last you can try 33 and you will get an exception of course argument out of range what else you can do you can remove you can for example let's print something lego strings dot remove some element i can remove the c sharp now i don't have c sharp i can remove element which does not exist to remove c sharp several times nothing will happen because it's already removed and also i can uh, remove remove at which means remove a element Re what happens strings dot remove at remove at at one means delete the first which is in fact the second because we start from zero the element of position one and we have three elements we have three at one have four and remove the first the, at the first position and also we can use this just like normal array we can you apply for strings dot land this doesn't work but you but you have count count is the same like length in for arrays and we can say strings of i is equal of strings of i plus example and we'll append this word after each string so we have means that list works almost exactly like a race it works fast generally set fast because you can misuse it and make it slow and it works with for with for each but you have additional things like insert remove at etc and at the most important strings dot add new value 
and this will work for many situations you need. We can add many uh, values, for example, one million values, and this will cost very little time. The printing will take a lot of time, but if we disable the printing, this will... It's very fast. Adding one million elements is fast. It's few milliseconds. Why? Is because the list has always bigger capacity than the its used capacity. For example, it, it always has, has twice space than required. When you allocate the list, it initially takes four elements. When you add an element, it will have one used element and three free, three available. When you add another element, it will have two full and two empty. When you use the last element, the list will grow and will make more positions. Okay, let me explain it. Initially, it has four positions. You put something here, 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 put something, and you try to, to add one more element. It will grow and make eight positions. When you fill them, it will grow again and will make more eight positions, etc. How many times this happens? Logarithm of n of basis of two. I don't know how to say this in English, but it's log of n times, which is fast enough. Okay, we'll have a special talk about efficiency of the data structures. Now, you can know that adding elements to a list is a fast operation. Accessing elements by index is fast, and it works almost like arrays. Some people uh, don't use arrays at all. They just use list of t. It's not highly recommended, but this could work. And this is an example of what happens, how we add elements, and how it grows. I already explained this. We have some example here. Let me see it. Resizing lists. It prints the capacity and the count inside the list and adds list of n elements. For example, we can add 10 elements. At the beginning, the list has zero elements and its capacity is zero. Later, it has four and one of them full and it has four and four full. When we add the fifth element, it grows to eight elements as a capacity and fifth, five of them are used and it grows exponentially. But this is an implementation detail. Finally, we'll focus on some well-known problem, which is about hopping, or the, word, the other word is cloning of arrays. How to make a copy of some array. Because some people think it could be done just like declaring a new array and assigning the second array to the first. But this will not work. Copying arrays means to copy the array values, not the array address. If we do this, this will not work. We'll have two arrays, and they will point the same space in the memory. For example, if we have the array 1, 5, minus 1, 3, and we have first array, it stored some, somewhere in the memory. And we, if we say second error array is equals to first array, this will no, not make a copy. This will make R2, which shares the same instance of this array. And this means that after that, if we say R of 0 
is equals to zero, this will change both of these arrays because they are shared. They point the same memory. This means that this is due to the fact that arrays are referential types, reference types. They are pointers to some space in the memory. That's why this doesn't work correctly, or it works correctly, but not the way you may expect. Most people expect something different. This behavior is called cloning, to clone some object, to make a deep copy of some object, to make another object with, which looks the same but is located on different space in the memory. How to do this? You can use array.copy. Array.copy, we have array and we have dot .copy. Hmm. Array is very interesting thing. I should show you more things about it. It can sort arrays. It can arrange arrays by increasing or decreasing order. It can do many other things. So let me show you the example. No, I don't have example. Okay, now we, I'll have it for you. We have some array int array r is new int array of these numbers now it's empty I'll put some numbers for example ok and now I can make int array array2 round equals to new int of the first array dot land and now I can say array dot copy rr into r a r r two why this doesn't work ah I need to provide the land r dot land so this is incorrect It should be something like this. Source array of length. Okay, and now what happens if I change R2 of 0 is 0? It will change only the first array, not both of them. I can put a breakpoint, press a F5, and see the first array has 3 at the first position and has 0 at the second. If we, instead of this, write this, the incorrect thing, we'll have both arrays with zero at the first position, because it's shared. I already explained why this happens. That's why you can use array.copy. There are many other interesting things that you can use. Array has also sort. You can sort this in increasing order. We can print this to, to check that it works. Wow, we have sorted this. The algorithm uses quick sort. Okay, what else I can show you? Sort also applies for lists. You can check. So, today we had a look inside arrays, which are powerful way to process sequences of elements. In most cases, that they are in the same type. We can use array of objects where elements can be of different types, but it's not usual. We can access element arrays by index by using this operator. We can process them with for, for each. For each is read-only processing. For 
can change the array elements. And also, if we need resizable array, we can use the list of tech class. And that's all. Do you have some questions? Ooh, go, go, not. How to find swipe 22? Go to that swipe. Number and enter. 22, enter. Wow, I found the magic in PowerPoint. Uh, the lower code, code, there shouldn't be minus 1. Array, array, array. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, we can correct this. Or this it should be uh, less than or equal. I see, I see. It's you are correct. It, it was a bug or mistake or uh, I'm trying to repair this. Now it works. Okay. Other questions? What do you try to copy uh average with different length? Uh you, you supply the length. When you copy arrays, you supply how many elements to be copied. If you have enough elements in both arrays, it will work. If you have less than this value in some of the elements, you will have an exception. Okay, yeah. There are particular cases where we should uh, use uh, two arrays with the same reference. I don't know. You may need, generally, when you are sure you don't change them. I, it's normal. For example, uh, you read some values and for some reason you need to have copy. Ah, I have a good example for you. You read uh, an image. For example, you, may, you are trying to make a solitaire game. You have the image, Pop Karo, <laughs> King... Uh, some of the cards, King Diamond, oh, King Diamond. You have it, and you need it only once. And you read it in an array of bytes, only once, and keep it in that array. But you, you may have many copies of this card, but you don't need to, to have a copy of the image because it's the same. It's, a, it's an example where you, you can use the same reference. Other questions? I have nice problems for you. The first is okay, 20 integers, not interesting. Read arrays. Oh, these are not interesting. How to find the maximum sequence of AQ elements in array? You could start somewhere and go on the right. And when you see difference, this means that it starts another sequence. For example, you start here. You have a sequence which holds two. You come here. It's different than the previous. So you, this sequence ends and you start another with one. You have the same here, which is continuation of the last sequence. So you have a sequence of length two, which holds one, one. You come at the next position. This sequence obviously stops because the next value is different. And you start another, two, it's and so on and so on. This is the good algorithm. You can always create other algorithm. Try each starting number, each ending number, for n, for m, <laughs> and try to check with 4k whether these are elements are the same, which is very, very slow. Because if you have one million elements, we'll have one million by one million by one million. So the good algorithm is to keep the current sequence where, where it starts and how long is it. This is the same, yes, the, the dancing bit needed this algorithm. But in the dancing bits you had less numbers, so you can apply any algorithm. Generally, 
If we have 1,000 numbers, it's not a problem to use any algorithm. If we have more, it's not a good idea. Next, maximal increasing sequence. It's the same problem like the previous. But you just see if the next number is greater than the previous, not equal. One byte, one character difference. That's all. Wow, two integer numbers find k elements that have maximal sum. You have some numbers and some k. For example, you have these numbers and k is equal to 3. You need to find three elements which has maximal numbers. Maximal sum. If you sort them, they will be the last k elements. For example. This is the best. Now, here you need to uh, implement selection sort. Do you know it? If you don't know it, you can find it in Google. What is selection sort? Selection sort is something... Wow, it sorts the numbers. See what happens. It's not a graphical algorithm. <laughs> uh, there is an explanation what happens here. You can read it. There is a implementation in in some language, which is not C sharp or Java. It's, it's Pascal, but it's easy to read. Okay, what happens next? Sequence of maximal sum. Nice. I'll not give you the joker here because it can be done with only one scan from the left to the end. Only single scan of the elements. There is a correct algorithm which scans from the left to the right and pass through each element only once. The most frequent element. Hmm. Nice problem. How to solve it? The to find the longest sequence. Okay, this will work. You can also use a hash table <laughs> if you know it. It will. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can get this element, go on the right and count how much. You can start, take this element, one, and count. You can take this, it's one, and count again. <laughs> but it'd be slower slower than sorting and which with the hash table it will be linear it will work for 1 billion elements fast but we'll learn about it at the third part of the course program Ooh, you have some integers and you need a sequence of given some s Ah, but this is a sequence. Oh, this is nice. So you can... How many sequences we have? Each element could be a start, and each element could be an end. This is one, this is another, this is the other. So we can start with this, check this sequence, check this sequence, check this sequence, check this sequence, until the end. We can start from here, check this, check this, check this, etc. Binary search, you should read what is this. It works for sorted arrays only. Keep in mind, <laughs> first you need to sort it, you need to implement it etc etc the, the nice interesting things are here with the asterisk these are problems which are hard they can be solved with what we have already uh, studied in this course but they are not this is a generalization of our problem with 
few numbers which have some given sum, subset of given sum. Generally, this is very hard problem. Integer numbers and n elements, subset of Kali elements which has a Ah, this is almost the same problem, but you need to find exactly k elements. This both problems could be well solved with recursion, or if we have some uh, limitations, they could be solved with dynamic programming technique. But they are for champions only. We will not have so hard problems at the exam. At the exam, we will have easier than these two problems. If we have some others, okay. I think we don't need to discuss them. Now you have a lot of work, significantly more than than usually. So I don't believe you can solve this in few hours. You need to spend a few days. Okay. We can take a break.